Shoulder arthroscopy has been strongly evolving in the recent years, and this case is one more example of, of how far can we go using arthroscopy to solve our daily shoulder problems in the office. So this case is about a 49-year-old man who is a manual worker and was operated in February 2009 for a small supraspinatus lesion in his right shoulder. The surgeon who operated him performed a standard acromioplasty and fixed that small supraspinatus tear with a single metallic anchor. The patient went to physical therapy for six months and then he came back to work, but still he had pain over his right shoulder and one year after surgery, he was sent to me in the office. He still had very typical symptoms of cuff pain, with pain at elevation and a lot of night pain too. In his physical examination, it was very clear to me that he had AC pain, and I then suspected that maybe his supraspinatus lesion could not have uh, strongly healed. So I, I asked him for a new MRI, a new Ertro MRI, and this is his exam. This is a coronal image in, in a T1 scan in which it's very clear that the metallic anchor was in a good position. And this is another coronal image, still in T1, but it's really hard to tell about the status of the, of the tendon only with this image. This is a coronal image in T2 in which we can see some edema around the tendon in the region it was fixed, but that could correspond only to scary tissue above the, the tendon too. And now still in T2, we can see a great amount of edema in the AC joint, not only in the coronal view as we are seeing now, but in an axial view too with some cysts in the medial part of the acromion too. So I then performed an anesthetic test first in the subacromial space with good relief of, of his pain, and then I performed an AC test, and after that the pain was fully gone. And so an, an arthroscopy was indicated to perform a distal clavicle resection and to evalu evaluate the supraspinatus previous fixation and fix it again if it showed necessary in, uh, in the new surgery. So this is his arthroscopy. This is a right shoulder reestablishing anterior portal with spinal needle in the upper part of the subscapularis. Now uh, we, we are using a shaver and performing a very slight debridement on the anchor of the biceps. Now we are testing it, and the anchor of the biceps was very good, in a very stable condition. And then we tested the biceps itself, and the biceps was very stable. We could only see some synovitis in the inferior part of the biceps, but it was very stable, and I think that this is an important feature to be done in our shoulder scope when we are dealing with some cuff lesions or cuff problems. Now we are seeing the insertion of the supraspinatus and now the infraspinatus and the teres minor and the cuff was really in a good condition or ins inserted so then we performed a slight debridement with the uh, uh, blator in the synovitis of the biceps and then we came back to the subacromial space. Now we're in the subacromial space working for the lateral portal, a lot of fibrotic tissue. We had to remove it, it all. Now we are working underneath the, the, the uh, uh, acromion. We are seeing the internal deltoid fascia with a lot of fibrotic tissue. And now we are starting to remove all that fibrotic tissue using a, a shaver and the, the ablator. We are working just lateral to the anterolateral angle of the, the acromion. And now we, uh, we are using the instruments to enter between the fibrotic tissue and the lateral delta 2 Now we are 
starting to finally see the coracoacromial ligament. And there was really an enormous amount of fibrotic tissue, but with patient, we, we would have to re remove it all. Now we're starting to see the coracoacromial ligament that much probably was not r removed in the first surgery and still removing all that fibrotic tissue until we saw a much more normal anatomy and now we are still entering between the lateral deltoid and the fibrotic tissue in order to remove it all working just underneath the anterolateral angle of the acromion. With a lot of patient we could remove all that fibrotic tissue and now we are finally seeing the coracoacromial ligament and we started to release it using both shaver and electrocautery, the ablator, and we can see that that, that patient had really a, a, an enormous amount of fibrotic tissue, but then it was finally removed. Now we are seeing a quite normal acromion. At that moment, so still working through the lateral portal, we took a look at the, the tendon. There was really an enormous amount of fibrotic tissue above the tendon. And now we are working in the lateral gutter between the lateral deltoid and the greater tuberosity. And then we finally saw the supraspinatus tendon. It has some fraying in the, in, in the bursal fibers, but we would just have to perform a, a slight ablation of that more superior fibers. Now we have seen the infraspinatus too, but it, it seemed to be in quite a good state, in quite a good condition. And then in, uh, we, we finally saw the stitch that was done in, in the first surgery. The stitch was fine and the tendon was quite in a good condition too. And we, we were using the ablator to, to palpate the tendon, but we didn't feel any kind of new lesion. Now we are still freeing the lateral gutter between the greater tuberosity and lateral deltoid. And now seeing the tendon again, but the tendon was really in a nice condition. This is the greater tuberosity and the muscle belly in the left side of the video. And then we put it in the camera on the lateral portal and we decided to perform a very slight acromioplasty since that was a, a revision case. So now we are performing a very slight, a very smooth acromioplasty working for the posterior portal when watching for the lateral portal. Now acromioplasty was almost finished and then we finally took another look at the tendon, looking for the lateral portal, but the tendon was really in a nice state, in a nice condition. And at that moment, so we started to perform the Manfort surgery. So in this case, I started the Manfort surgery, working for the anterior portal when watching for the lateral portal. We would have to remove all the inferior AC capsule that was very uh, strong in, in, in this case. Now we are seeing the distal clavicle and it was uh, quite clean and now we are seeing on the left part of the, the video the spine of the, the scapula, this is important landmark in order for the surgeon not to get lost in the sub uh, acromial space. Now we started with, with starting the, the Mumford surgery still working with the osseous sh shaver for the anterior portal removing something like six to eight millimeters of the inferior clavicle. And now we are working in the upper part of the distal clavicle. Now we change at portals. We are working for the anterior portal and watching for the lateral portal. This is the clavicle on the left. And this, the superior AC ligament in the upper part of the video, and it must be cleaned of any bony fragment and finally now we change the portals again now we are watching for the anterior 
Porto clavicle on the right, acromion on the left. We are entering with a spinal needle in the upper part of the AC joint just to show that the very good space was done. And at that moment, the surgery was then finished.